Kaleidoscope is a diff tool that can compare all sorts of files, code, images, even a PDF. It can also help you debug an Xcode, review your code before you commit, or review a teammate's pull request, and untangle those pesky merge conflicts using a very nice visualization in the three-way merge tool. Kaleidoscope has so many use cases that really come in handy as a developer. All right, let me show you this thing in action. There's three quick steps to get up and running with Kaleidoscope. First, you go to their website, download the app. Let me minimize Safari and you'll see the app here. This is what will pop up. You'll probably see it on the getting started, the onboarding. But once you do the onboarding, go to the integrations. Next, you want to install the KS diff tool. This is the command line tool. You see, I already have it installed. What you'll see on your install is just an install button. One click, install, you're good to go. It really is simple to get this set up. So let's go back to Safari. Now, if you want to do the code review, the merge conflict, file history stuff, that's when you'll need to configure Kaleidoscope with your Git client. And you can see there's many Git clients here. I'm using Tower in this example, but let's say you use the command line. Here's how you would set it up in the command line. Back to Tower, you can see it's really simple. So you open up Tower, go to the configuration, and as you can see here, set your diff tool and merge tool to Kaleidoscope, and you're done. Again, really, really simple setup. So let's get rid of Safari and go back to the app. And if we check out configure integrations, you'll see the KS diff. We already have that installed. Git, I have made Kaleidoscope gets default diff and merge tool. Again, you see my button says remove. Yours will say install. It's one button click, super simple. So now that we're set up, let's start with the very basic use case. And that is comparing two files. So I'm gonna compare two Swift files that have the UI for my app, CreatorView. And a little bit of context on this use case is I have different UI files for you know, iPhone, Mac, and iPad, you know, because the Mac and the iPhone are very different devices and all my business logic is handled in the view models, but I have two separate UIs. Now, sometimes the screen between the iPad and Mac and the iPhone is very different, so I want them separate. Sometimes they're pretty similar. So I wanna compare the two UI files just to see how similar they are. So pulling up Xcode, here I am in my project creator view. I am on my iPad and Mac version of the expense view. So I'm gonna right click, show in Finder. And then if I pull up Kaleidoscope here, oh, I gotta go up to Recents. This is where you can see drag files to compare. So I'm gonna drag the expense view in. Cool, you see it on the one side. Let me make this full screen and blow it up so we can see what's going on here. And now I need to drag a file to the other side. So I go back to Finder where I was in Creator View. I will navigate to the iOS folder, the iPhone, money, and then compact tax view and drag that in. I know tax view, expense view, I renamed it. I haven't renamed it in all the code. But anyway, the point is now I have on the left my iPad and Mac version of the expense view, Swift UI stuff. And on the right, I have the compact version, which is the iPhone. So if I wanted to say like, hey, how close are these files? And if I go back to Xcode real quick, I could, okay, there's my expense view. I could open up the compact tax view on the right and I could slowly scroll and like go back and forth and check that out. If I go back to Kaleidoscope, now I have them diffed side by side and I can see like, okay, on the iPhone, I added a little extra padding on line 32. Looks like I removed some padding over here. There's no corner radius and padding on the iPhone. The, the Mac's frame width, right? Because the Mac and the iPad have big wide screens. I don't have that on the iPhone. Long story short, I'm not gonna really dive into details. I can look at this file side by side and see just how different they are. And looking at it, I might be like, you know what? I can probably consolidate these files into one Swift UI view and reuse it across all platforms. So simple example, but the idea here is to put two code files side by side and compare them, but it doesn't have to be code files. If I close this out here and go back to Kaleidoscope, Let's paint another picture. Say I'm negotiating a job offer or a contract offer and we're going back and forth on, on the price, what I'm doing. And I wanna make sure version two of the contract that has all my new negotiations in it is included when they send over the final version. So let's walk through this example too. So open up my finder, see I have creative view contract offer V1 and V2. And again, I simplified these contracts. Obviously, you know, a contract has many, many, many pages. I did this to be super simple. So the scenario we're playing out here is the initial offer was just iOS dev work on the creator view app, 200 bucks an hour and ends on February 1st, 2024. Well, I negotiated, as you can see in V2 here, I negotiated, hey, let me work on the Vision OS version of Creator View. But for that, I'm gonna charge 300 an hour and it's gonna take me till April 24th. All hypothetical situation, of course. But here I have two contracts. Now, like I said, if a contract was 20 pages, wow, this is gonna be a lot to make sure they have all the little negotiated changes in there. But what I can do, if I'll close these out, again, drop them into Kaleidoscope, contract offer one. Contract offer two. And now I can see side by side real quick, again, make this bigger. I can see the diff, right? So we've added the line, begin work on vision, uh, OS version of creator view. You can see I've changed 200 to 300 in February 1st to April 1st. So 
Like I said, if the contract was super long, you'd be able to really parse through and just only see the differences, which really comes in handy when you're negotiating a contract or a job offer. But this diffing stuff works with any text file, any PDF, this was just one scenario. And the last example I wanna show is comparing images side by side. And I just have a light version and a dark version of my app. You can see I can drag this side by side. Now, the scenario I wanna kind of demonstrate is, let's say I got a design from a designer and so the design is on the right, the dark mode version, but on the left is my simulator screenshot. So I can compare pixel by pixel my design to the screenshot to make sure I have it right. And again, you can compare any image side by side. You can drag this thing around, you know, whatever angle you want it to be. That's just the combined view. You can do side by side view to compare it like that. Again, you can diff all kinds of file types from your code, images, PDFs, just super handy tool. Kaleidoscope can also integrate with the Xcode debugger, which gives you a really nice quality of life improvement in that when you're printing stuff out to the console, you can send those to Kaleidoscope to diff them side by side. If you're not quite following along, let me show you an example and you'll see how cool it is. Here I am in Xcode, but we need to integrate Kaleidoscope with the Xcode debugger. So back to Kaleidoscope. And if I go to integration, see configure integrations, down here we see Xcode. We've already installed the ksdiff command line tool. We need to configure the ksp and kspo commands available in LLDB. Just hit configure. Okay, done. <laughs> Simple setup. Again, Kaleidoscope does a great job of setting things up very easily. So now when I set a breakpoint, and you know in the console you'll do PO whatever, and it'll print it out on the console. Now I can do kspo and it will send it to Kaleidoscope. Let me show you. Just for context, this is my schedule view. My app helps YouTubers run their business and I have a schedule view so they can schedule all kinds of content, right? A video, shorts, live streams, podcasts, et cetera. So that's the context we're gonna be working in. And the example I'm gonna show is when you're working with a larger array of data and maybe you manipulate that array, you're adding things, you're removing things, or you're changing items in it. And you wanna compare like the before and after, you know, to make sure those things happen or to debug if you're having issues. So that's what I'm gonna do. So say var schedule items equals mock data.scheduleItems, that's just so I can get a mutable version of that. So we'll say scheduleItems.remove all where. So again, looking at the schedule, I got videos, live streams, podcasts. Let's say I wanna remove all the shorts for some reason. Just again, hypothetical example. Say dollar sign zero dot content type. So my schedule item has a content type. So I'm gonna remove all where content type equals short. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint here before so I can print out my schedule items and I'll put a breakpoint after this. Now, before Kaleidoscope, if I ran this, so if I hit schedule to hit my breakpoints, okay, so again, the old debugger way, PO, schedule items, hit return. There you go, there's my array of schedule items before I remove the shorts. So you can see I have a podcast clip of content type short, cool. So I would have to print this out, look at it, and then I would have to print it out again after I removed all the items. So now if I did, you know, same thing, PO schedule items, well now I get my list of schedule items, we'll scroll it up again, and I can see there's no shorts in here, but like, look what I'm having to do. I'm having to scroll up in this console, do manual comparison. Well, let's try that again, except now we're gonna do KSPO, and that's gonna spit it into Kaleidoscope, and then I can compare that in a nice diff that's way easier. So run it again, again, schedule, and instead of PO, I'm gonna do KSPO, schedule items, hit return. Okay, that opens up, I'm gonna make this bigger on the text here, but that opens up Kaleidoscope. Now I wanna compare my next printout, so back to Xcode, advance my breakpoints, and again, same thing, KSPO, schedule items. So now that'll open up on the side, and now you can see I get a nice side-by-side -side diff of my printouts. And if I scroll through them, you can see, 12 elements, nine elements. You can see in red, this is where I deleted a short. Keep scrolling down. I removed a short, keep scrolling down. I removed a short. So again, I'm comparing my printouts in the Xcode debugger. This was a relatively simple example, but you can imagine if you're having an array of hundreds of items, thousands of items, and you need to compare them and see a diff to see if you know the manipulation you're doing worked or you're trying to debug and you're trying to figure something out. This is a huge quality of life improvement from Kaleidoscope. Now let's talk about how you can use Kaleidoscope for code review and solving merge conflicts. As a reminder, when you're using Git with Kaleidoscope, this does require you to integrate with your Git client. Again, in this example, I'm gonna use Tower, but you see the list here of Git clients you could potentially use. Okay, so to demonstrate this, we're gonna walk through a hypothetical scenario to create a merge conflict. And admittedly, it's gonna be a relatively simple example so I can show you how Kaleidoscope works. I know in real life, merge conflicts can be very, very nasty. All right, here's the scenario. Myself and my teammate have been tasked to add more customizations to my app. I've been tasked with allowing the user to customize their schedule item colors, right? You see on the screen, right? Videos are 
red, YouTube shorts are teal, podcasts are blue, etc. That's all hard coded. They don't get to pick the color. Well, we want to change that, right? If they want to have their videos be green, have at it. So I'm going to implement that customization. My teammate has been given the task to allow the user to select a custom theme color. Right now you see the app has a teal theme to it. Well, they can pick whatever color they want to maybe match their YouTube branding. Okay, so that's their task. We go our separate ways and do our work. Now, of course, I'm not gonna build the whole feature. We're gonna do some mock code for the example. So those are the three quick little changes I made. I changed the preview. I deleted the product demo button because we got rid of that in the app. And then I added this button for our schedule item colors. And then I added the file that has our imaginary <laughs> implementation. My work is done. Let's go to tower now and start reviewing our code so we can commit this, create a pull request, handle any merge conflicts, all that stuff. But first I wanna show you how Kaleidoscope allows you to review your code before you commit or submit a pull request. So here I am in tower, I'm on my branch, you know, custom schedule item color. If I go to working copy, this is like my working changes here. And now any Git client is gonna show you this view right here, right? This is my changes. And you see them they're stacked vertically. This is like an okay view, especially for super small, simple changes like we did. Like this is probably fine. But as you know, if I were to really build this feature out, there'd be a lot of stuff in here and it'd be complicated to figure out what's going on. Well, this is where Kaleidoscope comes in that allows you to compare the changes from what you did to the previous ones. So I'm gonna click my settings screen and up here, you see the diff tool button appears. I'm gonna hit diff tool. This opens up Kaleidoscope. Again, this is the integration we did where we made Kaleidoscope our diff tool for tower. So I'm gonna do command plus to let you see the, uh, the text bigger. But what you're seeing here is a side-by-side -side file, right? My settings view on the left is what I had before. And the settings view on the right are the changes I made. You can see right here, big and green, we added our schedule items color button. Now this is what's called the block view. You can see on the left, it's kind of faint where it's, there's a block like darked out. And then same thing here, I deleted the navigation link. And then down at the bottom, you can see my changes on the settings view, I added the navigation stack. So this is the, the block view side by side. This is the one I prefer. I love seeing the whole file side by side, especially when you've made a lot of changes, I like that. But you can do the flow view up here in the upper right is where I'm changing this. So that's the flow view, which kind of just re replaces that block with like a little line. This is all personal preference, by the way, stylistic. And then there's the unified view, which instead of seeing things side by side, you just see one view with your you know, additions in green, subtractions in red, and then changes will be in blue. You can see the A side on line 176 and the B side on line 176, just in unified. So personal preference as to how you like to see things. Again, I like the block view. Just I like to visually see them side by side, what I added, what I removed. Now you can also make some changes in here. So let's say, oh, I got word, you know what? Don't take out the navigation link for the product demo. Let's add that back in. So on this button, I can bring A over to the right and there you go. Now I've added the product demo back in. So you can't make changes while you're looking at this side-by-side -side diff view, but it's a great chance to review your code. Make sure there's no typos or make sure you don't have commented code anywhere because you absolutely want to proofread your pull requests before you submit them. The last thing you want is to be that person on the team that always submits a pull request that has typos. Maybe your spacing isn't lined up. You have code comments everywhere. To be blunt, it's just sloppy work and you don't wanna do that. So always take the time to proofread your pull requests before you send them up. Kaleidoscope is a great tool to see that side by side to really go through it with a fine tooth comb. Okay, so now I'm gonna save this file, save. And if I close out Kaleidoscope and go back to my settings, now you see the change where I deleted the product demo is no longer there, so that's good. Now let's go ahead and stage our changes and we'll commit this. So we'll say custom schedule item colors and we'll hit commit. We'll push those changes up to origin. Cool, now we're ready to submit our pull request. But before we do that and solve any merge conflicts, I wanna show you one little feature about Kaleidoscope. So if I go to Kaleidoscope and I can drag the settings view directly from Xcode to open a comparison, I'm gonna make my text bigger over here. But what you see here is an entire history of the settings view file. This is another feature in Kaleidoscope where you can compare like my current commit, you see custom schedule item colors up there in the upper right. This is the entire commit history of this file. So I can go back and compare. So let's pick this one. Let's pick just a couple commits ago. This is when I changed my SF symbols from strings. I created an enum, you see SF symbol.calendar versus string of calendar. And I did that through all, you know, my whole app basically. So the point is, if you're trying to debug something or figure out the history of like how this was built, why this happened, this is a great tool to go back through the entire history of the file to see how it changed over time. And again, in Kaleidoscope, you compare them side by side, you compare different versions between the A and the B. Again, super handy to see the evolution of a file. Now let's create a pull request to merge our changes into the example dev branch. But our teammate has already finished their custom theme work and they've already merged their changes in. So when we try to merge, spoiler alert, there's gonna be a merge conflict that has been contrived for this video. But I'm gonna show you how Kaleidoscope can 
easily solve that merge conflict. So in Tower, we'll right click our branch, create new pull request. We want to merge into example dev on the base branch. Our branch is the custom schedule item color. We'll call this schedule item custom color. Hit create pull request. And here in Tower on the upper left, when we tap on pull request, there's our pull request we just created. And it says, this branch has conflicts that must be resolved. Like I said, we expected that. So when we hit resolve, we get some options, go ahead and hit merge. And then now I have the files that are conflicting, right? You see two unresolved conflicts. So the first one is our settings view and the other one is our project. Let's do the settings view first. Now, because we've integrated Kaleidoscope with our Git client tower, we get this button, right? Merge in Kaleidoscope. So we tap that button and this is when we get the beautiful three-way merge tool. So let me explain what's going on here. So big picture, when you have a merge conflict, the branch I have is conflicting with the branch I'm trying to merge in. So the branch I have is on the left. See Sean Allen, custom schedule item colors. That's what we just did. The branch I'm trying to merge into, Sean Allen, custom theme implementation. That's the example dev branch. And the latest commit is custom theme implementation because our teammate committed that. So those two are conflicting with each other. Now this middle window is how we're going to resolve that conflict. So the conflict is that we created our schedule item color button and our teammate created a change theme button and we put it in the exact same spot in the settings view. So sometimes a merge conflict, like the left side is correct and you don't wanna use the right side or vice versa. In this case, we wanna use both, right? I don't wanna delete their button. We wanna have both buttons. We'll just have the schedule item colors on top. So using these buttons down in the middle, I can bring over side A and then I'll click on the modifier bring over side A. So now you see I have my schedule item colors in the middle. And what I'm gonna do, because you can edit this middle window however you like, I'm going to copy that button and paste it over here. And I'm gonna space that over to where it's supposed to be. So now you see I have changed schedule item colors on the top and changed theme on the bottom. And like I said, you can make edits. Like you see here, I'm using color.label. That's the extension I used versus the UI kit semantic color initializer on color. So. I can edit code how I want. So the whole point is take a look at side A and side B and come up with the resolution in the middle. So now up in the middle, you see merge resolved and we get the green check mark. So now I need to save the file. So file, save and Kaleidoscope. Now here's an important thing because this tripped me up. When I was first going through this, I just command tab back to tower and you can see there's work in progress. There's all these files. Well, I got hung up. I didn't realize you need to close Kaleidoscope. So by closing Kaleidoscope, this tells Tower, hey, I'm done making all my changes. Go ahead and reassess things. So now after it reassesses, I look at my settings view and you can see we resolved our conflicts. We have both buttons in there. Now let's move on to our project. Very similar concept, merge in Kaleidoscope, get the nice three-way merge tool. We have my branch on the left, the custom schedule item colors. We have the branch I'm trying to merge into with the last commit of custom theme implementation on the right. In the middle is where we resolve the conflict. So this is the Xcode project file. If you're not familiar with it, it can be just a giant white wall of text. And you also may have noticed like, where's my like conflict? I gotta scroll all the way to find it. Down here in the lower right, you can see conflict one of one. If we had multiple conflicts, we can just go through them with the up and down arrows. We only have one, so pretty easy. So what happened here? It looks like we created our schedule item color picker file, right? We did our imaginary implementation. Well, our teammate created a theme manager file and we put it in the same folder. Again, if you're not familiar with the Xcode project, this code here is a folder. You can see group, group, and you can see the files in the folder. So basically we both created files, put them in the same spot in the same folder, which created a conflict. So again, I don't wanna delete their theme manager file. I don't wanna delete my schedule item color picker file. So I'll go down here, say choose both, a first, and that just put schedule item color picker on top of theme manager. But as you see in the top middle, merge resolved, we got the green check mark. So make sure you save the file and then make sure you close Kaleidoscope to let Tower know we're done making our changes. Now you see no unresolved conflicts to resolved. So now we'll go ahead and commit and then I'll say resolved merge conflict. We'll commit that. And then on my branch, I'll push those changes up. And then when I go back to my pull request, no longer have merge conflicts. This is ready to merge. But before we merge, let's do another simulation. Let's pretend a teammate is gonna review it. So a teammate opens up tower. They see my pull request from Sean and they wanna review it. You can go over to change set over here and then hover and you see you get the diff tool. This will open up my PR in Kaleidoscope. So again, Kaleidoscope is a great way to review a pull request. Let's go to the settings view. So if someone's reviewing my pull request, they can see the before and after side by side. So they can see, okay, they added schedule item color button. That's cool. We made a small adjustment using color.label and okay, cool. That's the only changes there. And then here's the file we added, the schedule item color picker. Again, just imaginary implementation. They can review that. So the idea here is Kaleidoscope makes reviewing a teammate's pull request easy with that same old side by side 
side diff view. So we'll close this out and we'll go ahead and merge this because it's good to go. So I go back to conversation, hit merge, merge pull request. So let's go to example dev, check out, get on that branch. Let's pull down the changes, the new changes I just merged in there, right? Now you see custom schedule item colors. So we're good to go. So example dev is up to date with our latest changes. Let's open up Xcode to test this out. We are on the example dev branch. Open up creator view into the settings file. You see, here's our button with schedule item colors. Here's our button with change theme. And there it is. You see our button for schedule item colors and our button for a change theme. So we use the three-way merge tool in Kaleidoscope to easily fix that merge conflict. So Kaleidoscope is a great tool whether you just want to compare code files, images, or maybe a PDF when you're reviewing a contract. You saw the Xcode debugger tool that made console printouts super easy to compare, and you saw how it can review your code and help you solve merge conflicts.